Hey everybody. Uh, today we're talking thread. So we I, we didn't really we realized we'd never done a video about the different types of thread for hand sewing leather work, and so we're gonna just talk about it. It's pretty simple, but it's one of those things that there are a lot of little nuances, and it can get a little confusing. So. What types of thread do we have in leather work? Well, traditionally, we're using either linen, polyester, or nylon thread. We're using either waxed or unwaxed. The unwaxed, you can use unwaxed, or you can wax it yourself, which you do usually with beeswax. What we, we're going to go through some of the different sizing options, some of the different material options, and when each one is good for a specific application. The first one we're going to get into is the classic Ritz of Tiger Thread. Now, Buckle Guy put together this kit. It is now available for sale on their website, which is the first link in the description since they're sponsoring the video, as always. Ritz of Tiger Thread is a flat braided thread made out of polyester, so it's synthetic, which means it's not made out of cotton. It's made out of plastic, basically. Um, it does have a light coat of wax on it, but not too much, and it comes in 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and I believe one millimeter, probably comes in 1.2 as well. Um, that's a little harder to find. I don't know, honestly, I've never looked for anything bigger than that. But it comes in a ton of different colors, and this is different than something like this. So this thread, this is Vinimo, and this is nylon, but they make a lot of this in polyester too. Nylon's, it's one or the other, it's very, they're, they're very similar. The big difference is that this is round, so this, this is not a braided thread. So I don't know if we can get close enough, but the difference is gonna come in these threads when you decide what kind of stitching irons you're going to use. If you're using diamond stitching irons, you're probably gonna have a preference for one style of thread. If you're using French style pricking irons, you're probably gonna have a preference for another style. If you're using like circular holes, you're probably gonna have a preference for something else because it's all gonna be about how the thread lays in those holes with a saddle stitch. But with Ritza, what you're getting is a flat thread that is going to look a little bit different than a round thread, obviously, depending on the style of tooth that you're using for your punching and stitching. Let's get a sample. So here's a stitching sample. This is 0.8 millimeter Ritza Tiger Thread with five millimeter spacing. Now we will go back and talk about spacing and how that affects thread thickness and selection later. Right now we're just gonna go through the different types of threads that we have. So five millimeter spacing, 0.8 millimeter, flat braided polyester waxed thread. <laughs> there we go. There is another option now though. So um, Main Thread is a company where the thread's made in USA. We've been using their thread for a long time, but they've been making this waxed polycord, which is it's, you can use it for stitching leather, which we do on our production pieces because we do the big um, Boy Scout style stitching holes. So they make thread that's like, this is 0.035 inches. They make it up to like super thick. Um, people use it for beading, braiding, bookmaking, all sorts of stuff. We love it. It is known to be a little rustic. They did just come out with their own flat, uh, flat braided wax polycord that is very similar to Ritza, but it's a made in the USA option. So here's a close up of the two in comparison. They're very, very similar. This is the 0.02 inch waxed poly, uh, flat braided polycord from main thread. This is the 0.8 millimeter Ritza Tiger thread. They're very similar. They work, they both work really well. Um, I've used the main thread a couple times. It's only just come out. It's a little bit silkier, so it's a little more light. It's, it's waxed, but it's very lightly waxed. And it seems to slide through leather a little bit easier than Ritza. Now, Ritza's really good. It's just um, a little more heavily waxed. So it's all preference based on that. This is Vinimo, but it's pretty much, they're all very similar to each other. Even like Clarkson Coats or whatever you get at Joanne Fabrics or big box stores. A nylon, a nylon thread is gonna be a nylon thread. Um, I like Vinimo. I like their color selection. It can be difficult to get if the color's out um, because they're made in Japan. But um, the nice thing about nylon thread, similar to polyester thread, is that it's color fast, so it's not going to fade over time. Um, it's also synthetic, which means that you can melt it, and that's how you seal off your stitches. It's also easy to repair by melting if you're in the field. Um, you can, if you, if this stitch breaks, you can cut it and just take a lighter to it and seal off the ends, and odds are, with a saddle stitch, it's probably gonna hold for the rest of whatever you're doing. Some comes waxed, but some does not. So it's up to you to 
pick if you want to order a pre-wax thread or a non-wax thread, or both, we do both. Um, and then once you get it, if you're going to wax it or not, because you don't have to wax this to use it in hand sewing. I prefer to, a lot of people prefer to, um, but you don't have to wax it. To wax thread, very simple. You cut off a piece, you take a little bit of wax. What I do is I just put my thumb on it and kind of pull at a, maybe a little angle there, one side and then the other. You can hear that. Now our thread is waxed. So then we have wax thread. DIY, I guess. So it's no big deal to wax thread. Um, let's get a stitching comparison. So the biggest difference between the polyester and the nylon, the polyester in this case is a flat braided thread, whereas this is just a round twisted thread, I think it is. Um, so let's get a sewing, a stitching comparison with the same spacing, and you can see what the difference in look is, because this is going to give you a more traditional machine sewn look, whereas the flat braided thread is going to give a much more traditional sort of Western hand sewn look. So you can see the difference here is not just that it's a bigger thread, because it is a little bit of a bigger thread, but it's also the width profile, right? It's not bigger in all dimensions. It's just not as wide. And when you have a slanted stitch, this wider profile is going to create almost a diamond, right? So you have one point, a point here and a point here, and the stitch goes out on either end to create much more of a diamond profile. When you use a round thread, like the Vinimo, it's gonna, you're going to get the slant, but you're not going to get as much of this sort of diamond shape, which I think is what lends itself to the flat thread being a little bit more of a Western take on things, so a little bit more chunky. This is a, this is a pretty thick, this is Vinimo number five. Um, so they make a couple even thinner versions of this. And the reason you would use those um, is going to be your, your stitching spacing that you, you pick. So we have polyester, flat braided thread. We have nylon, traditional round thread. Our last big one, we're not going to get into like natural tendon thread. People, especially in Japan um, and indigenous people, used to use the tendons of the animal itself. Um, sin sinew? Sinew? Sinew. To sew, and people still do. So you can use that too. I personally have never used it. Don't know where to get it. Um, we're going to go into linen thread because that's really the last of our three options. Those are kind of the big three as far as materials are concerned, linen and cotton, um, for the modern day leather, leather trade. So this is linen thread. This is the classic linen cable. I'm going to say it in American. Not. <laughs> it's made in France. I'm going to, I can never know how to pronounce the name at all because I didn't take French in, call, in high school. Um, but this stuff's been around for a very, very long time. It's very popular in leather craft, and it is a linen thread. Now, I am going to come out of the gate saying I am not a fan of natural fiber threads for leather work, simply because I like how... So here are the good things about linen and cotton threads when it comes to leather work. They age with the piece, which means when you have a synthetic thread like this, this is polyester and nylon or plastic, essentially, right? So this color is not going to get darker or brighter. It might get dirt on it, but it's not going to, the material itself isn't going to age, patina down, get darker and lighter like leather does. It's going to stay the same color. Natural threads, linen, cotton, will age. So they will get darker in color. They will age with the piece. And in that sense, I really do love it. There are a lot of people that are real traditionalists, and this is what was traditionally used before synthetic threads were available in leathercraft, in French leathercraft, and in other craft around the world. I tend to think that leather is so long lasting, if you use a natural thread, it's pretty much a guarantee that it's gonna break before the leather wallet is worn out. The only time I've ever had broken stitches due to wear, um, I made a batch of wallets with cotton thread, wax cotton thread, and about seven years later, they all came back, like all like 35 of them, because the, the thread had broken. Now repairing, it's no big deal, but, this thread will outlive this thread, abrasion-wise, color fastness, all of that, um, two or three times over at the very least, depending on the circumstance. Obviously, if you're, if whatever you make is just getting rubbed all day, the, the thread's going to wear down. But in normal use, um, a polyester synthetic thread 
it's my preference to use those because they last a lot longer. It's the same reason I don't use plastic ID windows in my leather wallets because the, the plastic cracks and wears off before the leather is even close to giving up. However, um, a lot of people really do like this thread. I, I love it, it's a nice thread. Um, it's just not my preference. However, we're still gonna do a stitch test so we can have all three options. Now this is, I don't even know what size I got. It's this, it's this one. <laughs> These are the two. I don't know how this is sized. I've only bought this three or four times, to be fair. Um, but we'll get a stitching. Now, this is also not waxed, so we're going to take a little bit, and we're going to wax it as well. Is it round or flat? This is round. Yep, the only flat ones we have... Ritzo was really the only one known for flat, and then Maine came out with their flat a couple weeks ago, and so now we have options for flat, which is interesting. But this is a round thread, similar to the Vinimo. It is a little bit thinner, I believe. Um, and we'll wax it and get a stitch line on. We have our linen thread here, and you can see my hammer was dirty, and I got the thread dirty, so I'm not used to working with it. Um, so the other thing to take note of is that you have to backstitch linen thread. You can't, it, it burns like a candle wick. So with these, you can just use a lighter, melt them down, and that's pretty much enough, even though every, all of us usually backstitch. Um, with linen thread, you want to make sure that you get a nice backstitch locked in. Now, I did look up the difference between polyester and nylon thread, um, as far as strength is concerned, because I've never really looked it up before. So, obviously, um, there, is a different, there is a difference between the two. What I could find, and a lot of you probably know this already, I'm learning as I go with this video on the difference between these two specific materials. Polyester has a lot of strength and better UV protection, but once it's been exposed to UV, it weakens significantly. So, nylon is better for outdoor use, but polyester is... Uh, better for sewing. It's a little bit smoother, which I can fully understand. And um, it also, I guess for short bursts in the sun, it is more color fast. Um, a lot of it has to do with outdoor exposure. If you're making leather goods, leather doesn't sit outside in the rain and stuff. Um, the leather will rot long before the thread does, I think, in that. I think they're talking about, you know, sailboats and backpacks and outdoor furniture and stuff like that when they, when they talk about outdoor durability. Um, However, linen you definitely don't want outside because it'll just rot away um, very quickly if it gets wet and stays wet. So let's get into sizing and what size to pick of which thread and when you would use each one. It's a very popular question we get, and I always say it depends on your stitching spacing. So what we have here is we have two different spacings for each of these threads, and the thread stays the same size. So this is 5 millimeter spacing. This is 3.85 millimeter spacing. It's all the same tooth profile. It's our signature chisel that's coming out soon. So it's a diamond shaped tooth profile. And you can see the differences here, not only between the flat braided and the round, but between the stitch spacing as well. Generally, the smaller the, the stitch spacing, the smaller the thread you can go for it to look balanced, right? Because larger threads are wider. So as the holes get further apart, the thread getting wider will look more balanced. So I'm a big fan of using 5 millimeter spacing for most of my projects. And for that, I'll go with a medium-sized round thread, so number 5 Venimo, um, something like that. Or I'll go with the smallest flat braided thread that I can find, so like the 0.6 millimeter Ritza or the 0.2 millimeter main thread. Um, that's generally what I'll go with. Once I step down to the 3.85 sizing uh, spacing, you can go much smaller. You can go to like a number eight Venimo. I think it goes that way. Number one is the thickest. So I think you, go, you can go to like a number eight. Um, I don't know. This is size 432. I don't know in linen thread. Um, but you can go down as much as you want. And then if you go into the crazy sizes, like the 2.2 millimeter chisels, you can get really, really thin thread. So you have to remember that you can get a specific look by adjusting either of these things. You can adjust your spacing. So if you have different chisels but one size thread, you can change your chisel size spacing to get a specific look. Or if you have a bunch of size threads and only one set of chisels, you can change the thread size to get a, your desired look as well. You can get a sort of chunky Western look. You can get a very refined machine sewn look. Um, this is also a refined machine sewn look. But you can get a bunch of different looks just depending on how you mess around with threads. I always tell people that I would invest a few bucks in get one thread in one color, in all the sizes they have. And then you can really experience, or not all the sizes, but four or five sizes. Then you can really experience what the thread 
feels like, not only when it's done, but to work with at different thicknesses, widths, etc. So there we have it, a shallow dive into the world of hand stitching threads for leather. Um, we have our nylon, uh, polyester thread, our nylon thread, some linen thread. We have even more polyester thread. Flat braided, round, traditional, um, you have lots of options. But hopefully this video gives you a good overview of where to start and um, what you can expect from each of these different types of threads and how to adjust your inputs, your thread and your stitching chisels to get the right output, meaning the right aesthetic, the right strength, etc. for your stitch line. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.